Welcome back. Today we're going to tie my Calabatus nymph. For those that you do not know, I am equally as big of a still water junkie as I am for moving water. I absolutely love lake fishing. It's got a great equation. Bigger fish, more fish, dumber fish. That's a good thing. And I didn't even say for Johnny because I'm not going to pick on Johnny in this video. So the Calabatus that we're doing here is a very, very, very simple fly. In the uh, this, if you look at an actual calabatus, what you'll see is that they're one of the, the uh, I don't know if they still classify them like that, but in the old days they used to call things like super swimmers. And these are definitely a super swimmer. And one of the fastest flies there is underwater, not in that dragon or damselfly style, but pretty close. These things, they're free swimmers, they, they swim around in the weed beds, and man, they, they, these things emerge fast and they swim fast and they can, it's really cool because the trout get really locked in on them. And so what we're going to try to do on this fly is we're going to try to build in something that has, it's really simple, which I really like lake flies are simple. Uh, they just, they, they, they move easily. And what you're going to see is well, on the actual Calabatus, it's got this, this wispy tail. So we're going to build in this tail in here that's really wispy. We're going to have a, a the, the uh, shell back or the, the over, the uh, wing case, Jesus. The wing case is going to be uh, really all the full body length. Super simple fly. It's got a tail, uh, wing case, and it's going to have a body, nothing else. It, no legs, no nothing. Because these things, when they swim, they're down and they just really are hauling. And so, and that's when, you, that's when they're on them. They don't, you don't really see them. I mean, I fish calabatus under a bobber now and then, but you know, like a pheasant tail or something. And I actually don't think these, this particular fly works as good under a bobber as a lot of the just really nothing flies like a uh, pheasant tail. But when you start moving this fly, it's really hard to beat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be tying this. Uh, I used to tie it on a 200R, which is a TMC. Uh, I did it on the, the Dairikis. Dairikis kind of went out of, they're kind of dead now. Now we're use, I'm using back on the Umquist. This is the heavier wire. This is the 200, or I mean the 205, the U series. This is the economy version. This is the version that's kind of taken the Dairikis place. Great hook. Uh, it's going to be, like I said, I'm going to do this one on a 14. Basically, I do this fly on a 14 and 16 uh, for myself. So I know people that tie it in 12s. That's one of the beauties of, of working with the, the lakes, too, is that you generally can go up a size than, from anything you've used in the past. I mean, you know, on the rivers, you see us get real, real exacting. But a lot of that's that European influence, too. For the lakes is because that's where i mean the europeans are really into the, the still water fishing uh it's you know the european uh competition fishing is as big on the lake stuff as i mean it's really it's really close to our bass fishing it's that popular so what this fly is going to do what it's going to use excuse me is i'm going to have some uh, ostrich tail for the tail you can use I, and I, I forgot to mention this earlier on this one, this is a commercial fly here, and this particular fly, attack of the dogs, this particular fly has a very dark uh, wing case, and Jeremy was the first one to point it out that they just don't fish as well as the, the lighter color. Uh, I think originally I used the, the turkey tail, and then I switched over and pretty much just went to straight pheasant tail. I haven't, on my own, that's all I use. I just use pheasant tail. I don't go with the really, the... The, the turkey wing's okay, it's in the lighter colors like this, but I've, I've just kind of migrated to that. I'm going to use uh, just bleached hair's mask. I, I just, I mean, I'm going to show you two ways to do it, two styles, but uh, the hair's mask, I just, I really like doing my own hair's airs, I like doing my own calabatus with hair's mask. I'm using, this is going to be bleached. This, this is SLF dubbing, this is Whitlock's number one. Uh, and uh, you've heard me say this in the past, anything Dave Whitlock put his hand on with, with the color and shades, I think is unreal. The guy is a, he was just, he is so, he's an artist. He's just really good at his blends. And if you go in here and his red fox squirrel, uh, it is such a perfect color for that fly. It's unbelievable. 10 times easier to do what I'm going to do, but I'm so used to doing this that uh, that's what I use. And then somewhere in here, I've got some uh, small gold wire just UTC small gold, and you can use copper, you can use dark, it doesn't really matter what you're going to use, but that's what I'm going to use. So, and then I'm going to use, 
Uh, burgundy, again, I do this in all my nymphs. You don't have to use burgundy. Uh, they don't have burgundy heads. You can use whatever color you want, but it's just kind of a signature thing. Now, if I didn't lose that fly, just like always, check it out where you're going to put your, where you're going to wing cases are going to start. So I've got right here, this particular fly I do with about a 20, 20, 25%, so a quarter of the hook. I'm going to go body, wing case, you know, we're going to put the, we're going to have a wing case uh, up front. And so you can see right here where I'm going to break it. I'm going to break it right at the 20%, 25%. And so we've got something to tell us where to stop. If you do anything, do a little bit long. Don't, don't, if you're going to break it wrong, break it with a little bit longer wing case. It'll look better to you. So start your thread here. Do, 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 do. Where'd we go? There you are, right here. We're going to pull this out of here. The beauty of this, this is, this is ostrich. The beauty of this, these tails is that when you get into a full ostrich plume like this, Everything, including all this big stuff, you can use everything on here. You have very, very, very little use for ostrich hurl tips down in here when you're tying. If you're doing, if you're using it for, you know, a wing kind of maybe a little bit, but you can always trim them. So you've got just, I mean, this is an, an eternity of this stuff to tie in for tails. And so I'm going to come in here. I'm going to get three of them. Give me. And again, I don't have to cut. I don't have to. I could use I could use way down into here if I wanted to, just like these skinny ones up top. And I don't have to cut these off. If you think you're going to use them, it's about, I don't use ostrich for a lot, but if you thought you were going to, like using it for, when I use ostrich, I'll use it on uh, the thorax of some of my flies. It builds this big puffy thorax, right? And so I just cut off the tips. So I don't, not, I left myself plenty to work with. But I still have all that left to use for something else. So it just makes it super, super simple to do. So where was it? Coming back here, you could tie your wire in right there. That's what I was about to do, just to save you a step. So I'm going to take one of these. I'm going to tie three of them in. I'm going to tie the first one in. And I tie this one in. This is just what I do with mine. I tie the first one in the top. And this is such a this is such a waste of time doing what I'm doing right now because when these things get wet, they're going to go just like that. This, I separate them, you know, doing this to make them look like three different tails. <laughs> Such a waste of time because they don't have three separate tails once they're wet. They do, but our flies don't, but it just looks cool. So we're going to put these in here and we're just going to make kind of a, if you're going to air, air long right now. So we're going to have three tails. Okay. Come forward here up to the, back to our two-third point, or I mean a uh, three-quarter point. Now we're going to take our wire, tie it in, back just a little bit, because we're building that taper. Mayflies have tapers. We need taper. So we're going to tie this in right here. I can't, I just went back just a little bit. I'm going to fold that wire over because we don't want that to ever, ever, ever pop out of there because we have to use it. So I cut that off. So I've got it on one side towards you. This side over here, I went to the halfway point, taper. We're just, these things are minor, these are minor little tapers, but it just makes the end product will look better. Now I came back here, see where I was. Give me you. All right, so now we've got these tails in here. The middle one's a little longer at the side. You can see they're already starting to get pushed together because I went a little bit farther back. Take your dubbing loop. I promise I'm not going to pick on Johnny in this one. Not even once, hardly. So pretty soon it's going to be Jeremy's turn to get picked on. He'll fight back, though. All right, we're going to come up in here right about to that 20% mark. If you're curious about that, get your sample out. Once you, I mean, you start putting your stuff together, just take a look, make sure you're close. Now I'm going to pick this, this hair's mask. And it, 
you know, there's no really way, uh, realistic way to tell you how to do this other than the fact that you pick random on the, on the face. And so I don't just sit up here or sit up here. If you look at the cheeks, they've always got the really fuzzy dubbing on the cheeks out here. And in the middle, you're going to have some, a little bit longer hair right up the forehead. You're not going to have as much. You have more spiky hair. I like to just kind of randomly pick around, but because I'm going to, I need the dubbing. I need, I start with a little bit of this fuzzy stuff in here. And again, if, if you were to grab that SLF Red Fox Squirrel, I mean, you just, you'd kill it. It's a perfect blend. It's perfect for the colors. I've just been doing this for so long. I just, I, I just like the way this comes out and what it looks like when I'm done. So I'm just picking randomly here and there. And then I just go in and, I, you know, I've got some of the fuzz. I've got some of the guard hairs, just a little bit of each. And, you know, I'm just, I'm just blending it back and forth, just a little bit back here, throwing a little bit of the picky stuff there. And then I'm going to build my taper. That's a little bit harder to do, to build this taper in your hand with, with uh, the natural materials because there's, there's random lengths, right? Just take your time, just come in here, and time meaning you might waste a whole 30 seconds. You're not gonna compare to just grabbing it out of the box and be able to blend it up and, and blend it. So all I'm gonna do, it took that long to build, and you can see it's a little bit thicker down here, a little bit thinner up there. That's off to one side just a little bit, and like that. So come in here, just have a little tiny taper to this thing. It's not, it's not really a big deal if you don't. It'll, you can always loosen it up in the dubbing loop. So I've got this in my rising dubbing tool here. Open this thing up. I'm going to put the skinny part right close to the thread or to the body. And you can see it holds together pretty well. I didn't lose much, even though it's just random stuff. It's just, it's all over the place. And so start it slow, just kind of look, make things, make sure things are where they want, give it the spin, and I'm done. It's, it's just that fast. It's so easy to do. If you don't like it, back it off. There's just, it's a little thinner right there than it was. You just want a little bit thin, pow, just like that. Okay? Hey, do not proceed. Did you see that? I got ahead of myself. Jeremy was going to let me go ahead and do that without putting in the wing case. It's more fun to watch that way. <laughs> My first mistake. By the way, the very first ones I did of this, uh, when I didn't forget to put my wing case in, the very first ones I did of this fly, I did not use that, uh, that ostrich. I used the tips of this. And so I tied it in like this, and I used this, this for the tail itself. I don't know when I went to the ostrich, but I, I did sooner somewhere in there. So I'm going to have about six. Sorry about that. Too much coffee. Whoever wrote in in the comments things about, I said I got to quit the coffee. He said, what, do you want to live forever? Good point. I'm back on the coffee. <laughs> That's probably why I forgot my wing case. All right. So they come in here. That was a... Uh, I believe, I don't know what that thread is right there, but it's mine. Man, first mistake I've ever made. Broke my thread on one of these once. Okay, there's my wing case, nice and tight to the back. Just cover that up, come back up to where we were. That just roughly that 25% point. Now back to the dubbing. So... Again, this, uh, you know, I usually I'm tied, most of my stuff I tie with the Roman Mauser. I've kind of got addicted to that stuff. This is Danville 6 uh, so you don't get to spin this up as tight as you would with some of that other stuff. This is, I mean, it's, it's nylon. This is old school. So get, get one good clean turn here and stretch it. Make sure that your wing case is going to fold over nice and clean and just move forward. Bow to the 25% mark. Make sure this is a, you know, it's going to look a little fuzzier right now than it should, but we've got it. We're going to, we're going to trap some of this. When we put this wing case on, we, when we get this set in here, we're going to trap some of this and we're going to go through with the wire to, to hold it down. 
So it's gonna, we're gonna lose a little bit of that, of the, uh, the bulk when we get going on here. So now we're gonna come under here. We're gonna go over top. I'm just gonna wrap through here. Make sure you don't move your wing case off to the side. Just, I'm not using my rotary. There's somebody commented, you know, wish you wouldn't use your rotary constantly. I, I would, I like to use the rotary constantly. That's why I paid for the rotary. But just that easy. So just take a look, make sure everything's on top, everything's back. I can screw my tail up a little bit. Now I'm gonna take this wing case and I'm gonna double it over, went right up to the eye. And I'm gonna come back with this same piece, right? And so I'm gonna put it back in the dubbing loop. You, you could finger dub that right now or you could leave it. I just dig dubbing loops. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of this fuzzy stuff and then I'm gonna take a little bit more aggressive. I'm gonna come in here. If you were if you're in a hurry and you didn't wanna you didn't wanna do this, you could very easily just continue, you know, put extra in your dubbing loop. I said I don't use legs, but I also I do kind of use legs in the fact that I'm gonna I'm gonna pick a few of these and I'm going to have them off to the side, and I'm just gonna make this a more random dubbing loop so I get a little bit of leg effect. When these things are wet, they'll all go away. Let my dubbing loop spin up there. Okay. So, and you, you can see we don't have much to work with here. Uh, we don't want much in there, so we're just, make sure you got some of those legs that are picky off to the side. We're just gonna give it a little bit more leg here. Pick them out so they're nice and loose. Give one good turn right in, on top of your wing case. Don't, don't make that, don't have a small, it, don't make it look like it's not folded. You want it to look like it's folding over the material over the, the body. Okay. You can come in and pick that out too. Uh, or you can take your, oh crap, I forgot what Kurt called this thing, but these little, these are like bore cleaners, but they're not. You can go in and do that to it. So now we're gonna come in here, we're gonna take that wing case that we've already made the little bump Set your wing case, you got your legs out to the side, everything's groovy. Finish your head off. Come in with a three turner on that one. Boom. Okay, let's see here. Got my tail a little crazy there, I think, with, a, with my second little uh, screw up. Oh well, there it is. So, you can see, if you can see, you've got, I'm gonna wet that just a little bit. You've got a nice cylindrical body. It's really tight, right? It's a, it's a small little body. It's got the right color. You got the guard hairs. And the thing about the guard hairs when the flies are wet is it gives them a little bit of the, the gill effect on the sides. And it, it just, it gives a little bit of movement to the body. Unlike a caddis where I want them really tight, these things have movement. This dubbed stuff really helps it out. If you take your dubbing brush and you come in here and just really lightly pick away at your legs if you want them a little bit longer, these are fine. These are just how I like them. I don't want them super long. I just want a little bit more body in the front. It's got a, it's a super fast fly, super simple, really durable fly. And so you come in here and it's gonna be really swimmy. You got the long tails, they're gonna be swimming around. You got your two-tone body, so you got the break from your wing case. It's got everything it takes to make a really, really good still water fly. Hope you like that out. Like that out? Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you something. Beep!